First and foremost, I would just like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Green Chef. Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company that delivers delicious chef curated recipes to your doorstep. They offer a wide array of options for every lifestyle, such as keto, paleo, gluten free, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, and Mediterranean for those who simply want a little bit more balance. Listen, I'm not ashamed to tell you about my shortcomings. I love to cook. I love to try new recipes and broaden my culinary horizons, but am I good at planning a menu or putting together a complete grocery list ahead of time so I don't have to visit the grocery store two to three times in order to have all of the ingredients for a single recipe? No, that is why I love Green Chef. You get a recipe card with pictures and easy to follow instructions, plus pre-measured, perfectly portioned, and mostly prepped ingredients. Plus it helps keep me away from the temptation of ordering takeout on the days that I don't know what to have for dinner. So if you wanna try Green Chef out for yourself, you can pop on over to Green chef.com and use my code Beatrice130 to get $130 off plus free shipping on your first box. Again, if you want $130 off plus free shipping on your first box, head on over to greenchef.com and use code Beatrice130. Thank you so much Green Chef for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into it. Okay, so hypothetical situation, right? So this is 100% fabricated. These are not actual embarrassing events that have transpired this week at all. Would never happen to me, ever, in a million years. So let's just say in the scenario, your skin breaks out just all of a sudden, a lot. Like very painful cystic acne on your face. You get back knee for the first time since high school. And wouldn't you know it, um, even a cyst appears on your vagine. And maybe the location of this makes it very painful to walk. Sitting down even hurts. And even laying down is uncomfortable because you were blessed with some massive thunder thighs that just... Are, there's no, unless you're completely star fishing. Okay, yeah, you get it. Anyway, so you spend the majority of the week like the guy in this painting. And I'm pretty sure that this painting has to do with some kind of like French Revolution propaganda, but we're not gonna like take the meaning of that. We're just gonna look at it as the literal meaning of like a person dying in a bathtub. Because that's what you've been doing for a majority of the week. You've been living in the bathtub. That's the only form of solace that you have in this cruel and unjust world is just the bathtub. But because you, an intellectual, have access to Google, have determined that you have soft tissue sarcoma. So you call the gynecologist immediately, get an emergency appointment, you go there. And they assure you that it's only a cyst, no need to worry, and you're relieved. But that relief is short-lived because before you know it, they're like wielding a syringe and, you know, um, coming straight for your hoo-ha. And maybe you're the type of person that does not do well with needles at all. Maybe you have to look away when blood is drawn. Maybe you've actively thought to yourself, if you were ever in a serious car accident, you hope that you just like are knocked out because you just don't want to deal with whatever medical thing happens to you in the ambulance. You just want to just not be aware of any of it. <laughs> And maybe even despite this aversion, you still got your COVID shot, but that's a little bit more propaganda. Let's just ignore that and move on. Anyway, so the nurse is expecting you to be an adult because you look like adult. For heaven's sakes, your birth chart says that you're about to turn 30 in a couple days. Maybe that's the situation, I don't know. But you know something she don't. You know something she will never know. That you're really dramatic and you have no chill when it comes to needles. So as soon as you feel the cold of the metal, like it doesn't hurt at all, you just feel it. Like the anticipation gets you. You buck, wild and unrestrained, like a peacock with the wind on its haunches. Free, but at what cost? Your display of fear and reckless abandon has caused the nurse to prison shank you in the coochie. It's an absolute bloodbath. You hear the nurse take a sharp breath inward, just like a ooh, in like a sympathetic, like that looks like it hurts kind of way. But it actually looks worse than it is because like uh, you got a fat vagina. And like quick side note, if we we're making like a pros and cons list of being fat, and I would say that it's like a major pro that like if you were to get shanked, you like have a little meat on your bones. You know what I mean? It's not that bad. I don't know. I never had that experience, but I would imagine that it's a little less severe than if you had no fat at all. I don't know, that's just speculation. So as you can imagine, the rest of the appointment is extremely awkward. You're apologizing profusely for bucking like sea biscuit while in the stirrups and they do what they can and they send you home with a prescription for antibiotics. And you're like, okay, cool. Like this will just take care of any infection that I have. It will clear up my skin. You get the pills. They're a beautiful shade of blue, beautiful shade of blue. I just have to take these twice a day and it's fine. However, these pills make you extremely nauseous. Like you take them with food, you do the things you're supposed to do when you have antibiotics, but your body is just betraying you every step of the way at this point. So 
So you get nauseous and you like throw up like once a day at least, despite you eating when you take the pill. So you're not even really sure like how much of the antibiotic you're like keeping down, let alone your ADHD medicine. And let's just for a minute be real because you've never done anything daintily in your life. So do you think you're just casually just like, Ugh. No, it's violent, it's dramatic, it's loud. You concern your pets where they like run to you while you're like clinging to the toilet. They're surrounding you, whimpering. You're like some kind of nasty Snow White. So yeah, that's how my week has gone. If you haven't been clued in that I was talking about me the entire time based on those very specific details in that hypothetical situation. Was not the best week. I'm not gonna weigh in this week just because I did lose a lot of weight, as you can imagine, from sitting in a bathtub of Epsom salt for many hours every single day this week, as well as throwing up a lot. I'm just like very dehydrated and I did step on the scale just because I was curious and it was like a big number lost. So I was like, I don't want to promote that kind of weight loss. You know what I mean? Because it wasn't like healthy by any means the way that that weight came off. And I know also when I weigh in next week, when everything goes back to normal, that weight loss won't be permanent. It's water weight. So yeah, this week has just been a slurry of doctor's appointments. Not only did I have that whole situation going on. I also noticed a bump like inside my nose. Like I tilted my head upward in the mirror and I noticed I had a bump inside my nose. And so I was, that's also a reason I was very concerned that I had cancer. I was like, oh my God, I just have all these tumors everywhere. But I went to an ear, nose and throat specialist and she basically just said like, that's my septum. It's like C-shaped. And also she said I had these like larger than normal. Ugh, I forgot what they're called. I just looked it up too. Uh, but they look like a pack of sausages. They're just some kind of structure in your nose that look like a pack of sausages. And mine were like just really big. And she's like, I don't know how you breathe through your nose at all. And I was like, yeah, it's really hard. And sometimes I feel like I'm dying at night. And she's like, yeah, I see that. So in March, I'm gonna have surgery to like correct that. They're gonna put shunts in my nose and shrink my like large sausages but I'm actually really excited for the outcome of that surgery, of actually being able to breathe through my nose again, because I feel sometimes like my oxygen intake isn't really adequate. And I think it would also improve how much I feel rested after I sleep, because sometimes I just wake up and I all, I already feel exhausted and I think, oh, I probably didn't like get enough oxygen while I was sleeping and you know, I don't really want to suffocate in my sleep. So that's that. If you see a video title with me saying like, I tell everybody I got a nose job, because like technically it is kind of like that, but it's just internal. They're not going to change the outside appearance of it. They're just fixing some things internally. My esophagus has just been going through it this week, so I'm not gonna talk that much longer, but I did wanna talk a little bit about setbacks. Because it does not matter, you could be the most disciplined person in the world, you can grind your body into a pulp and give everything you have, but there's just like certain things that happen that just kind of like stop you in your tracks and throw you off your plan. So this week I had a lot of anxiety. And if you're someone like me who has started over and over and over again, as far as like fitness, and health, you know what I'm talking about because you're on track. Like I was killing my workouts recently. Like I was reaching for like 20 pound dumbbells. I was squatting up a storm. At the end of my workouts, I was just like drenched with sweat and disgusting and it felt amazing. And so when that abruptly stopped, I there was just like a lot of anxiety surrounding the situation. I would sit there and I would like worry like, oh my God, I'm, I'm gonna fall off again. I felt a little bit of guilt and shame and I kind of just had to like snap myself out of that and be like, hey, you need to take a beat. You can't even walk. You spend most of your days in the bathtub. What are you really gonna accomplish now? Just like rest, get better, and get back on it. You want this, you're gonna get back on it. It's gonna be fine. You you took a week off of workouts. It's not that big of a deal. Quit being so gloom and doom. I'm just like very hard on myself and that's something that I'm trying to like work on, but I've just always been that way. So it ends up being a hard habit to kind of like disrupt. I was just working on shifting my focus from that anxiety of I'm just gonna fall off track and I'm never gonna get back on to realizing that I'm doing everything I can to get better. Like I went to the doctor, I've been soaking, I've been resting, what else can I do? Obviously I probably should have drank more water, but that's always my problem. So like this week, I'm gonna focus on rehydrating myself because my insides are like screaming and I don't know what my deal is, but I just always don't drink enough water. But anyways, I'm glad to report that I am on the mend. I'm feeling a whole lot better and I'm about to slap into the grocery store right now and grab some Pedialyte to help with the whole electrolyte hydration situation. And hopefully we're gonna return to like regularly scheduled programming, like something a little bit more interesting than just me sitting in my car telling you about my vagina. <laughs> and we'll continue to make progress. But all that said, I just wanna thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support the struggle, you're always welcome to subscribe and hit that notification bell. All of that stuff really helps out the channel. Other than that, I just hope you're having a wonderful day and your body isn't betraying you, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!